So this video is going to be very different from my usual crop of videos because first of all, this is a very serious topic. It's a topic that's very close to my heart. It is a very widespread problem to the point where even just by making this video, I am sort of almost indirectly confronting even some of my own friends in this industry. So first the context, what are affiliate links exactly? Affiliate links are basically a way for someone to monetize promotion of a certain product. So the way that you kind of recognize affiliate links is that usually they have a question mark tag equal sign. So for example, let's say on an Amazon link, you have basically like a question mark tag equal the name, and that's how you recognize an affiliate link. So the moment you click on it, and when you purchase something with this tag on, the person that sent you the link gets a cut of the profit. But at this point, I think a lot of people know exactly what affiliate links are, or at least have seen them in the wild before. But what a lot of people don't recognize is how these links basically affect the hobby or hobbies because this is not an issue that is exclusive to the audiophile hobby alone so what is the big problem it seems that with affiliate links reviewers are then afraid or unwilling to criticize the product that they are supposed to be reviewing and look i have been in the hobby for more than 10 years i have seen how things progressed and there is a very clear trend that the moment affiliate links some somewhat got normalized, got accepted as all right, that reviews kind of became super positive. Like there is no such thing as negative aspects, or if there is, they're very much smoothed over. They are very, they are quickly passed over. And I understand that a lot of these reviewers, they would go out of their way to convince you that this is not a problem, that this does not affect their reviews, their thoughts, that all opinions are of their own, that they're not going to be unbiased just because that money pile is already there. And to that, I say, you don't know that. You don't personally know these people. These people are not even your friends. They're not even your acquaintances. By all means, your relationship with them is parasocial. You don't know anything about them. And this applies to me as well. You don't know anything about me as well, which is why it is important for reviewers to eliminate all sources of potential doubt and bias before the review even goes out. I know this may seem a little idealistic at this point, but let me at least explain why this is kind of a requirement and why the current status quo is extremely harmful, again, to the hobby and all hobbies in general. First of all, there is a distinction between a reviewer and a salesman, a promoter. And reviews have a benefit that the promoters and salesmen would only dream to have, is that they're almost afforded a credibility just by being a reviewer. The simple example is, let's say you go down to a shop and then a retail assistant comes up and asks you, you know, tries to give you help about a certain product. And there's always gonna be a nagging feeling behind the back of your head saying like, this guy earns something based off something that he's gonna sell me. So I can't trust him because of that. And by default, a reviewer does not have that issue. A reviewer is supposed to give you the unbiased take. A reviewer is supposed to give you a list of pros and cons and give you a more balanced perspective that is not marred by the bias of monetary gain. You can see where the problem comes in when affiliate links gets thrown into the mix. All of a sudden, now that you have linked your potential income to how well that you can sell a product, you're no longer a reviewer. The line gets blurred. The line between reviewer, salesman, and promoter completely gets screwed up the moment affiliate links come into the picture. Basically what all this means is that affiliate links incentivize positivity. You are now afraid to talk about the deal breakers, talk about the flaws, or from a much smaller extent, you s smooth them over. You put less emphasis on the flaws and negatives and the deal breakers or whatever. Because again, the more you talk about these bad points, the less people you're gonna convince 
to buy the product and therefore your income is going to suffer. And again, I know that reviews are going to be happy to tell you that all of this is not going to affect them. And my point is always the same. You don't know that. Again, it's just the existence of the influence of monetary gain, but it's not just simply monetary gain because I'm not against reviewers trying to make this your job. It's monetary gain that affects the reviews. There is a huge problem here. Now, the usual pushback to this is that affiliate links are a necessary evil in that it's really hard as a reviewer, as a content creator, to make this, you know, our full-time jobs. And this is kind of like the easiest way because you're already doing reviews. You're basically convincing people to buy things already. Why not monetize that aspect? Look, I am a full-time reviewer as well. I understand all of these problems. I understand all of these concerns. And the way that I see it is that it's fine if you are not in the position of being a reviewer like let's say this right there's this monitor this tv that i always feature in my videos if i put an affiliate link for this in my description there is no bias because i don't review monitors i don't review you know all of these things it's not my wheelhouse so it's fine right the problem is that let's say i'm reviewing headphone number 73 and then saying how good it is and then I drop the affiliate link. Suddenly you see that there is a, there is doubt. Are you saying the product is good because it's actually good? Or are you saying the product is good because saying that it's good literally earns you more money? So what about the other income streams, right? If not affiliate links, why not find other ways? First of all, it's the most obvious one, which would be sponsors. NordVPN. NordVPN is a virtual private network that allows you to anonymize your web traffic with a simple click of a button. This basically secures your traffic and allows you to access sites that would have otherwise been blocked by your local ISP. So I personally use NordVPN to access shows on Netflix that would have otherwise been geographically blocked from my region. The local Netflix content can be a little bit mediocre. So what NordVPN does is that it basically allows me to unlock the full catalog of my Netflix account. Stay safe with NordVPN and basically unlock your full access to the World Wide Web. And now for a limited time only, you can get 70% off a two year plan plus one additional free month if you go down to nordvpn.com slash clinical. Again, nordvpn.com slash clinical. Go for a test run if you want because there is also a 30 day money back guarantee. Again, big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and helping me make a point. So thank you NordVPN for being the example for this video. And again, I am not trying to sell you this product based off of my experience as a cybersecurity expert or a VPN reviewer. No, I'm just an audiophile. Here, the line is clear. When I talk about NordVPN, I am a salesman. I am a promoter. I'm not a reviewer. The moment I talk about headphones and earphones and anything in the audio space, that is where the line is drawn very clearly. I am a reviewer. I am a critic. Sponsors are fine. Sponsors should not affect how you review certain products. At least it should be. Other income streams include obviously Patreon, where your own audience pays you and supports you for your content, regardless of how positive or negative it may be. Then there's also AdSense from Google or from other websites that basically monetizes your traffic. So regardless of how positive or negative your review is, it doesn't matter. All that matters for these advertising companies is how many clicks and how many views you can get. Now, I'm aware that this shifts the problem from being review integrity to something like, let's say, clickbait or whatever, incentivizing ways to get as many views as possible. But as I've said, the problem here is not necessarily problems inherent to being a YouTube creator as a social media influencer because everyone in this space has to care about clicks and views. So it makes sense that when you monetize it, you care about it more. The difference here is that again, as a reviewer, you are inherently held at a higher standard because people see you as somewhat objective. People see you as the unbiased voice in a sea of salesmen and promoters. And this trust will be broken if you just become 
another one of those people, just another salesman, just another promoter. I know there are going to be some content creators that are going to watch this and be asking. There must be some safe ways to monetize affiliate links, right? Yes, kind of. Like I said, in my own example, you can affiliate link things that are not in your wheelhouse, right? The monitors, the, the keyboards, the mouse. I, I mean, I'm just saying this as, as an audio file review. All of these things like gamer peripherals or whatever, I, I can probably affiliate link those things, right? Because at the end of the day, what I'm worried about is linking your income to how your review is being done. And because I don't review all of these things, there's literally no conflict. The other kind of gray area ones would be not to link the product that you're talking about in question at the point in time. So for example, let's say I, I review headphone number 74 and then I say, all right, there is no affiliate link for headphone number 74, but here is the other links of the other headphones that I've done in the past, right? It's a gray area. It's better, but it's still not great. I don't know because the whole point of affiliate links is that it's this huge moral gray area where at least for a reviewer, where you're supposed to be talking about it in a much more unbiased sense. And there are still problems with just linking, let's say, alternatives to the things that you're talking about so that you're not incentivized to just purely talk about positive things or good products or good products. Because again, we don't know if you're saying the product is good because it's actually good or it's just saying that it's good because you get more money out of it. This is the gray area. The problem here with linking alternatives instead of the main product that you're talking about is also that you you then prioritize products with higher margins. Because now instead of talking about the truly bad alternatives, you might now be incentivized to talk about the alternatives that have higher profit margin, that give you a higher cut every time you talk about it or every time you link about it. You see, in every single turn, there is always going to be a dead end when it comes to affiliate links. You want to use it. I understand that you want to use it, but in every single turn, there's always going to be moral roadblocks. And yes, you're well within your right to ignore all of these moral roadblocks, but it's also well within my right to call you out for doing that. So the important thing is this, is that there should not be, again, a linking of one's income as a reviewer to how well that they can sell a product. So regardless of how many units that you may sell in your review, ideally speaking, you should be making the same amount of money if let's say in an alternate universe, you said extremely negative things about it. So again, things like pre-roll sponsors, your Patreon, your AdSense, which is linked to traffic as opposed to how positive your review is. All of these things are not linked to the content of your review itself. And those are more conflict-free than again, affiliate links. So I'd just like to say again that this problem of being overly positive and again, glossing over flaws, glossing over deal breakers and all the similar likes makes everything in the hobby hard to progress. Because if people accept mediocrity as being good, then there is no need for the hobby to progress to a higher standard. Because manufacturers would then think that, okay, we could just churn out garbage. We could churn out cheap stuff, mark it up, right? And you know, give a cut to the reviewers and then they will say, they'll always say good things about it, right? The hobby stagnates and the hobby has stagnated for an extremely long time, at least until things like graphs came out and things that are much more objective that are not again affected by things like affiliate links. Again, I've been in the hobby for a very, very long time. Things are thankfully starting to change now because of all of these new things that again are not affected by affiliate links. But I wanted to change further. And the first step is, I guess, to acknowledge that we have a problem. And the second step is obviously to address it, that we have a problem and let's now talk about it. Affiliate links are bad if you're a reviewer. And just to drive home the point that there are other ways to monetize your content that doesn't go into this morally gray area of affiliate links. Patreon, 
Dennis, McMahon, Fates, Alexander, Stewart, Jonathan, Timmy, Amor, Jerry, Mike, GY Audio, ZF, HK57, Wang Yuan, Preaching Hana, Jeff, Johannes, Hamza, Zachary, and Money Boy. These people will support me regardless of how positive or negative my reviews are. As it should be. And even YouTube gives you an additional way to monetize your content, you know? Like my YouTube members, uh, Phil, What's News, Benjamin, Chinese guy and Ram Pari. Thanks to all of these guys again. They will support me regardless of how positive or negative my reviews are. Yeah, so this is again, I, I understand that this is very different content. I, I kind of sound like a Debbie Downer. But again, this is a genuine problem and not just a problem, again, that's exclusive to just this audio for hobby. It's exclusive to every single hobbyist industry where stagnation comes about from influencers or key opinion leaders that are simply satisfied with earning a quick buck by promoting mediocrity because they can. Don't normalize affiliate links because of that. The future where affiliate linking is normalized is not going to be a pretty one. So let's at least nip it in the bud before it happens. Thanks for watching.